Hi everyone, welcome to the March 2020 update. As we said on Twitter, this will be our final update before the demo release. As such, the contents of this update will consist of models that will be in Chapter 1 that we've yet to reveal. There will be no new map progress shown here, as although lots has been made, we feel saving the maps now until the demo will give people a better experience when they play it. For now, enjoy the very content-filled update that we have to offer. Firstly, the RTBR team has once again grown with a number of new members as we approach the demo release. Disaster B is here for animation. Next Brando, Spoops, Stabbered Meat, and Clitronics are our hardworking playtesters. Finally, Hansa has returned to the team after an extended absence to continue working on the mod. With these new faces and some familiar ones, we hope to ship a very refined and polished Chapter 1 demo and make good progress on the second chapter after that. Retro Boy, a modeler we took on before the previous update, made a great contribution to the team with his remake of the Combine Lights concept art. On Twitter, we showed a stylized render of this prop in the style of the concept art. We feel this will be a subtle detail that really helps make levels pop, and to help add some visual variety to the Combine prop that we've seen hundreds of times before. However, Retro also felt he could do the original light prop some justice, and we thought, well, why not? With this faithful remake of the original light prop, our mappers have extra tools to make old Combine architecture seem new again. When it came to creating concept art for the G-Man, we knew it was important to stay faithful whilst reimagining his look, with our own style, and of course taking inspiration from cut versions of the G-Man. To that end, we refreshed his look and tied his color scheme back to his beta incarnation, particularly his tie. Some ideas were drawn up for possible facial changes, but in the end we decided it would be better to remain faithful to Half-Life 2 and not to change his face. Realizing the concept art is something Mohammed has proven very capable of, his modeling of the G-Man proves he understood the design philosophy behind him. The new look for his suitcase, inspired from our concept art, does help bring a little more of our own personality into his look, without changing any of the core elements. Alexander was given the fire extinguisher and did a simple prop good justice. Whilst it may or may not feature as an actual weapon on RTBR, we've yet to decide on its functionality. It sees use in Chapter 1 already as a nice detail prop, something Alexander has proven very capable of providing. Once again, Alexander was given some of the finer details to refine, and with our new bullet ejection system, we wanted to spruce up some of the older shell ejections to make them more enticing to players. Modeling the Gibbs for the scanners is a little complicated, given they have to fit together to form the overall model, but also need to look good on their own. Some models will receive dedicated Gibbs, whilst others will simply adapt the existing model. But we felt the recon scanner was a significant enough entity to warrant unique Gibbs, and so you will be able to enjoy blasting scanners apart throughout Chapter 1. Whilst Alexander was remaking other item pickups in the game, he was given the idea to remake the item crate, and the end result is a faithful reimagining of an iconic prop. Given its prevalence throughout the game, you'll be seeing it plenty of times. An iconic character from the cut content years, Mossman's predecessor seemed crucial to remodel given her important role in Kleiner's lab. And whilst we still have ideas for refinement to her overall look, Robert's concept art nailed the initial design, and was more than enough for Mohammed to develop. Speaking of, Mossman was the first character model modeled by Mohammed for the mod, and a lot of work was spent refining the workflow of the model. We have ideas to maybe go back and refine it at some point, given Mohammed has learned a lot about working with Source, and we've learned how best to make use of his creations. But for now, we're happy with this result for the demo. Andy's presence in RTBR updates is a given, and his contributions to Chapter 1 have been immense. Manhax were another contribution of his, and relied heavily upon the cut textures for old Manhack models. A recreation made by a developer on the team helped them further visualize his look, and we think it came out very well. An alternative skin can be used by mappers to further add visual variety to these buzzy combine nuisances. Some of the mappers expressed a desire for a new light prop, and after running through some ideas, we decided on a look similar to what Alexander modeled himself. Although a small detail, it's another tool in the mapping team's arsenal to further add detail to maps and improve on them. With our remix of the old beta vending machines from almost two years ago, it was time to add them again with a model-based remake of the iconic Coltrink's machine seen prevalently in early Half-Life 2 maps. We'll be sprinkling this prop throughout the game, 
And it'll be a nice reminder that even in a dystopian future of Half-Life 2, cold drinks are always available. Retro took on the health charger as one of his first tasks on the team. With this, he was tasked with melding the cut model from the Half-Life 2 beta files and the finalized design from Half-Life 2. Rigged and then animated from scratch, the end result is a refreshing take on the health charger that, well, to dedicated beta fans, will be a welcome sight after a long fight. Finally, Retro's other early task on the team was the suit charger. This one was more complicated due to no cut model existing, but we decided to melt some of the ideas from the beta health charger model with the retail suit charger. We then made the metal subtly green as a nod to one of the first ever versions of the suit charger from Half-Life 1. We considered ditching the combine aesthetic outright and using one of the older designs, but it felt it clashed with the health charger, so we settled on the color as a reference instead. That's all for this update. Before ending, there's three more roles we're looking for right now. Competent level designers to help push progress elsewhere in the mod, female voice actors for purposes of voicing Alex and Elena Mossman, and male voice actors for the Consul, Kleiner, Eli Maxwell, and Gregory. If these roles interest you, feel free to add me on Discord at Krylik hashtag 0901. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon for the first official release of Raising the Bar Redux. Thank <laughs> you.